Heard the roar of the plane. My main man, Barry. Got a pretty good headwind, probably eight, nine miles an hour, so it won't take him long to stop. Unless Barry's put on a lot of weight. That's my man. Look at the smile on that cat. Look who I brought to visit. Hey. That doesn't look like a sheep hunter. <laughs> Are you lost? <laughs> Barry Barton, how long have you wanted to sheep hunt? All my life, Billy. I'll tell you, I've been waiting to get here, but I have been through a lot to get here this year. Yeah. We got nine days to make it happen. We're gonna be going hard. As hard as I can go. I get, this will be the real test. Whenever I first started talking about coming hunting up here, the real test was to test these artificial knees and see if they'd make it. Last year we went bear hunting and uh, that worked out great. I don't think we're going to have a problem. We'll get you settled in. Come up with a game plan, my man. All right. Yeah, my, my gear is a wreck. I just, <laughs> just said, you know, first guy on a runway gets to get go out. And, and I, I just threw stuff in. I, threw in. I had everything laying out on the runway ready to go. I knew you would. The first day at Barry Sheep Hunt. Snow on the tent. Kind of tells the tale. Nothing to do but ride her out. Six o'clock. We thought it stopped snowing, then we just realized we're in igloo. Yeah, we're in igloo. It, uh... I think we're gonna have to get something to eat before this blows over. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, I'm getting kind of hungry myself. Old Man and Mikey took care of you, didn't he? <laughs> Got the right pad, the right yeah, sleeping bag. We're toasty. He hits. He knows exactly what gear to give you and does a good job. And every dollar you spend is worth it once you get out here, isn't it? Yeah, when you come to Alaska, get good gear. You got weather like this, it's 28 degrees outside, it's blowing 10 miles an hour and it's snowing. You need good gear. And I mean, we could be stuck up on a mountain with this, but it just blew in overnight. But. So yeah, you gotta have good gear. You're spending the money to come hunt in Alaska and get the best you can find. And when you get the right gear, you only need one set. That's all you need. You get lousy gear, you need multiple sets of everything. Well, isn't this romantic? The stove's looking a little chilly. Welcome to summer in the Brooks Range. We gotta get some coffee. Hey, Billy. This is not exactly what I expected. I left 85 degrees and humid. I at least expected the summer in the Brooks Range to be a little bit different than this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is it, man. I can't believe it. Ten PM. Day one of Barry's hunt. The weather is finally broken. She is still cold. Second day of Barry's hunt. Gonna be the first day of hunting. She started breaking up a little bit last night. Rifle and pack's about loaded. Look at that, the sun's hitting the mountains. So we've kind of changed our plans rather than heading up and spiking out right away. Just because the going would be so slow, really trying to pick the mountains apart with this snow and then have heavy packs on while we're doing it, just make it more arduous. We're just going to go for a little day hunt up in that canyon right there. About a little after 6 this morning, the birds started singing. You know, when we got up, it was just so still. It just felt like nothing would be moving. It was still real cold. It's still cold now, below freezing. Uh, but yeah, like bear hunting in Peninsula, it doesn't matter where you're at. If the birds aren't singing, it's usually going to be pretty slow for wildlife movement. Four 
where we left up above there. I spotted, now that the sun's hitting these tracks, spotted them real easy. Look like some ram tracks or big tracks. Must have been from last night. Quite possibly the three that I saw the other day. I figured they would work their way towards the drainage right above our camp, but looks like they worked their way out and then went back the way they came. I know two of them weren't legal, the biggest one I don't think was. I saw them late at night, didn't put the scope on them, but uh, actually I did put the scope on them, but it was, it was real dark. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna head out of here, and regroup. You ready to do this, Barry? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, we're, we're finally packed up. We are in Operation Spike Out. Yeah. Got everything dialed in. We're gonna head up here. If it's a little snowy, we're gonna kind of take the planned route that we had for John last hunt. Hopefully we have similar success. We bump into something, but we'll hike up here, camp tonight. And hopefully first thing in the morning we'll come over, hunt all that. Maybe we could hunt out this one tomorrow, but in all likelihood we'll uh, just spend another night there. Usually when we get a lot of snow, I like to just hunt the main drainage. I like to just walk up and down it. Because a lot of times the sheep will kind of come out towards the faces. And then you get into a tight drainage like this, you're at a pretty severe handicap, obviously, because you're looking for white sheep in the snow. So a lot of times they're gonna spot you before you spot them. But snow definitely makes sheep do different things. Uh, if you know areas well, there's usually a place or two where the sheep will like to go when they get snow. I don't really know where that is in here because I've never had a snow like this when I've been hunting here. So maybe I'll learn something on this hunt. See these tracks get up here and I thought they looked pretty wide. And look up here on this ridge. What the heck, that looks like a bear. Well, here's the bear sleeping away. Looks like a good bear. Most likely a boar, he's dark. Looks like a lo pretty long square nose. Heck of a bear, I, I, probably the same bear that I saw in here last year. He's a, he's a big one. I got a sheep hunter on my hands here. This man's ready to get her done. I did. Right there is where John's ram died. So we had all these sheep, there was like 14 rams in here and I haven't seen any of them from camp, which was right down that draw. So I'm kind of hoping there's all kinds of sheep stacked up behind this on that south facing slope with all this snow. You think they might have dropped over the other side? I'm guessing, that's usually they like to bounce back and forth. But tomorrow morning we'll duck around this corner and glass up in here, see if we see anything. I'd be gosh darned if we didn't spot a ram. Set up the tent, glass a little bit, and I glass is coming in, but obviously not good enough with this snow. It's just so hard. And like I told you, I said hopefully if we see sheep, you should be high enough that they'll let us walk right on by if we don't see them. He sure did let us walk by. And he hasn't even really looked at us. There's a ram right on that little point. I'll get a close up of them. And then there's a young ram right on this back side is what I call the magnet. They all like to go to it and he's kind of slowly been feeding his way towards it. There's just a nice grassy slope. Well we're keeping everything keeping camp pretty tight. He's bedded down. Well, we were watching the rams. Figured they'd move before dark and they're heading to the magnet. Uh, where we got them? Um, big one joined the smaller one. So I'd imagine they'll be up, up and away tomorrow. So we'll probably climb that spine. Thermals be going down early, and uh, yeah, we'll just kind of see what the clouds are doing, that sort of thing. But, but yeah, it ain't gonna be no gimme, that's for sure. It, it, I don't know what it's gonna be like. I've never, never hunted it, never even climbed up it, but I always seen sheep on it from a distance. And uh, 
So, that ought to be exciting nonetheless. A little after five. Half up early. Well, I saw the rims right at the top, so I'm guessing they went over. But as long as the thermals are going downstream, I'm probably gonna get up against this bank, walk down real slow like try to glass up in this draw make sure they're there try to get an idea where they are you feeling lucky today barry i feel lucky every day all right just being here I'm lucky. that's right uh, that's I a good attitude great. we'll find something if we get lucky and they're low maybe we can make approach from the bottom i'm doubting it they were pretty high um, but if we can locate them that obviously be best even if we can't make an approach from the bottom at least we'll have an idea where they're at Come up here, you know, a little bit later in the morning, maybe before the winds will switch, start our ascent. Um, yeah, it'd just be a lot better if we could locate them beforehand. But. Spotted four more rams. One's probably legal. Just worn on both sides. Can't really tell to what degree. If I'd be comfortable calling him broomed, I'm pretty sure he'd be considered broomed. He's probably eight years old. And I just saw that big ram pop up on that spine just for 20 seconds. So we know they're still up high. I want to get up there before noon. I'd like to get up there about 10. Uh, figuring the thermals will switch about 9.30. Uh, they should be feeding until 11 at least today, more than likely. So I want to try to get over there when they're still feeding. That'll be to our advantage. You ready to make your first sheep stock? Yeah. So yeah, I think we're good to go. We're gonna go, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up the bottom. Go up through that little draw and then climb up that saddle. Right below that little saddle is where the best feed lot is. I think it'll be a safer approach if we come up over there rather than come up over here. In case they pop over, they could see us. Here we'll be pretty safe, so. Well, we're making good progress. Quarter to eight. We're gonna head up to that point, hang right at the Y. Right here's where those two rams came across yesterday. They're right up over, over top of that little rise when we spotted them. Our camp is down around the bend to the right. We're getting there, buddy. We're getting there. Yeah. Thermals have been coming up down there. Now they're, now they're coming down. The wind direction is going this way. So we figured the sheep are back over here. So we should be good. We're approaching the saddle. Because our thermals are good and strong this way, I'll probably pop up over here. Hopefully we'll find them. You ready? Okay. I'm take them. Whenever you're ready. This way. Just take your time. Hold it right on his spine. Hit him right in the shoulder. Okay. The one on the right, you just put his head down. Okay, when you're ready. I'm ready whenever. Just take your time. Aim small. Pick a hair. I'm ready to go. Okay. Reload. Okay. This way. Okay, he's the farthest one away to the left. Get on him again. He's running to the left. Wait for him to stop. Hold just over his spine. Wait for him to stop. I see him. Just wait for him to stop. Hold over his spine now. Okay. Aim right at the base of his neck. Okay. Right there it is. Take your time. There you go. Smoked him. Smoked him, buddy! <laughs> Smoked him, buddy. There's your ram. There's your ram. 
Oh, the poke. Miss him the first time. I don't know where you hit. Well, I heard it hit him. I heard it slap him on that on that second shot. You must have missed him on the first one. Is my yeah, camera filthy? No, it's pretty clean. No. This dang wind was swirling up here, and I think he had our wind. <laughs> Buddy! <laughs> Barry! I see you got your chamber open nicely done. Boy, it was a struggle to get up here. Before. Matt's, it was worth it. Matt's your sheep hunt right there. There's a man with two artificial knees. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Atta boy. <laughs> oh my God. He was, I first spotted him, snuck over right there. And he wasn't looking at us. And then all of a sudden, I, I went back, got the spotting scope, <laughs> make sure it was the same ram, looked down, and then he was looking at us. And this wind, we got a screwy deal here. Right when we came over the top, the winds were going up good, but then when we came over the top, they were going down. So I think the wind swirled a little bit. He caught a whiff of our wind, but he wasn't spooked at all. But yeah, I just didn't want to, we could have maybe went around and got a little closer, but with the, what this wind's doing, I just didn't want to chance it. So he was uh, right at 300 on the first shot, probably 330, 340 on the second shot. <laughs> That's a big ram. That's a big ram. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, buddy. Hey, oh, we can see the tent Billy, from here. Billy, uh, thanks a lot. I, I I just cannot tell you how I feel. Beautiful scene this I is. Wanna huh? say, uh, I, I want to say thanks to Karen again. Every hunt I ever go on is because she motivates me to do it. She's a, I love you, sweetheart. Thanks for the hunt. And Billy, thanks for bringing me here. Thanks for dragging my butt up over that mountain. I can't <laughs> shoot him without you. <laughs> I kept looking back and I'm like, I can't believe I'm up here. I can't believe I'm this high. I can't believe I'm climbing over this mountain. I can't believe he's dragging me up here. I can't believe he, <laughs> I can't believe he won't wait on me. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Mary, <laughs> congratulations, my friend. And what did your mom, your mom's at home. She's got pneumonia. She just had a heart attack and a stroke and you were debating whether to come up. And what did your mom say? She said, go get a ram for me. That's what she said. You got her done, man. We got you, her done. You're living your life. If it wasn't. It's nothing more that she would have had you rather do, no doubt. It worked out perfectly. As you can see from this country around me with these snow-covered mountains, it's a beautiful scene right here on top. It's probably, that's well below 30, no doubt. Probably got a six, seven mile an hour wind. Now it's actually blowing down, so. Yeah, the wind, the clouds are going exactly opposite of the wind direction right here. So yeah, just kind of a screwy deal since I've been talking, the wind switched. Um, but it worked out. You gotta love it. Video doesn't, does video, you've watched all my DVDs, does video do it any justice? No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. You just can't, you can't, it, you just can't conceptualize the size and the magnitude. <laughs> Couldn't happen to a more deserving guy, that's for sure. He's a gem, that feller. I knew I'd make a sheep hunter out of you. <laughs> You're retiring in a year, and after that, look out, huh? Yeah, I'll be hunting, <laughs> I'll be hunting all over the place. Well, Barry definitely hit the sheep the first shot. Here's about where they're standing. Must have went down real low, and went, like you say, went through his belly. Or doesn't look like lung blood to me. No, no, there's lung blood. You wouldn't have went that far. So yeah, you drilled them both times. I see. Either way, I see him. There's blood there. He's a good sheep, Barry. <laughs> yeah, that's a good sheep. He's big bodied. He's stout, dude. Yeah, he seems like a big sheep. Barry Barton. Yeah. Day three, August 29th. You got yourself a beauty there, my friend. We got a beautiful ram, and uh, my mom and dad will be so happy. This is something my dad wanted to do all his life, and uh, dad just. This sheep is yours and yours and mom's and I, I hope you're proud of it. Made a, made a heck of a shot there, probably about probably 340 the, that second shot. And uh, yeah, he is a nice sheep, no doubt about it. Nine, maybe 10 years old. Shot him from right up there. Now we got a couple wolf tags, a couple caribou tags, but we got a little bit of work to do here, no doubt, before we get too carried away. It's gonna take a day and a half of work. We're doing a full body mount and packing them back to camp and spike camp and all that stuff. So, well, we did figure out the first shot. 
It looks like you got a little shrapnel in that leg too, yep. Well, that's just some shrapnel, but he shot the leg off. Yeah. So, yeah, he didn't uh, he didn't suffer very long. Again, uh, like I say, Billy, I I I just I, I I couldn't do something like this without somebody like you. I mean, coming to Alaska and hunting a sheep like that, I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, oh, I don't think I'd have seen him. <laughs> well, I didn't see him right away either. <laughs> yeah, but you did see uh, him. We saw him eventually, though. Yeah. yeah, Barry's like, I don't see him. Where are they at? Where are they at? I'm like, why don't you find him, Barry? That way you can pick him out. You know what you're looking for. So I kind of, I steered you in, but you got her eventually. <laughs> well, I, told I him actually the ridge got and behind then he found the spot and scope and went <laughs> like that. <laughs> Lined it up. Well, that works. Yeah. He's a beautiful Boy, sheep. That, that is a beautiful ram. That is a beautiful sheep. Well... We got Barry's sheep all butchered up. I'm just uh, cutting out the nose and the lips. And uh, we're all but done here. So we'll get it wrapped up, pack it down, figure out what we're gonna do. We had a little snow squall move through. Uh, I don't even know what time it is, but uh, we'll get them back to base camp at some point in time throughout this afternoon, tomorrow, and the next day if need be, so. The sheep ain't a booner, but the pack is. And Barry's got a pretty good. I got well the whole. The, he's such he's such thick hide. This is all uh, from here down's all cape. Hey, uh, then I got a bunch of meat. And Barry's got a bunch of meat too. <laughs> yeah, now the going downhill, boy, that's by far harder than going up. Uh, just hard on the knees. You can really feel them catching. So yeah, these sticks help out a great deal, but there's only so much they can do for pack over 100 pounds so that's the nature of the beast but that's probably why not too many guides last that long just dig your heels in don't lean forward everything's different when you got a load on your back four o'clock so what i think we're gonna do is drop the meat when we get out in some willow bushes, that's about a mile and a half walk to Spike Camp upstream. And then, then we'll pack up camp, probably eat some supper, pack up camp, and uh, head back to main camp. On the way back, I got a tarp that it's under the tent right now. We'll lay the tarp over the meat for the night. And tomorrow, come on back up here, grab the meat. Voila. It's just too much to get the camp and the sheep, everything out all in one trip. So, yeah, I mean, we got time, so. We made it to the bottom. Tomorrow, whenever you go in, if you're going to go in and see mom tomorrow, you can tell her that Bill, Billy and I got one of the nicest doll sheep I've ever seen. No, I'm not kidding at all. Horns and Cape. So we just got our camp. We got another five miles to go to base camp. Come grab this stuff in the morning or whenever we get here. Score another one for the wolves. They killed this since John and I have been here, so in the last seven, eight days. There's the what was in the stomach? Maybe looking for another one. Yeah. They got her pretty well cleaned off though. Sometimes it's just easier to walk right in a creek. Rather than fight. Fight willow brush and all that good stuff. There's camp. So it's a little after nine. And uh the day started before five. Not too many things that I can do for 16 hours. Not be bored at all, enjoy it pretty much the whole time. And then wake up in the morning and be ready and raring to go do it again. But hunting in Alaska is one of them.
after a little over a two hour hike, made her to the meet. She's safe and sound. Take a little break, eat a little bit, drink a little water. Back her down to base camp, I'll start working on the hide. Up here glassing for caribou, got a sow and a year and a half old cub behind us, so we'll be keeping an eye on her. No caribou yet though. Got her right there. 38 inches. 12 and a quarter. So not super massive, but 38 by 12 and a quarter, nine and a half years old. That's a heck of a dull sheep right there. We were gonna cross the river and just go sit the rest of the afternoon. We called base camp. They said the weather's down, so they can't move us. We're gonna try to move out to the flats where there's more caribou. This river's raging. There's just too risky just to cross it, just to go over there and sit. We've just been seeing more caribou on the other side of the river. I think we're just gonna bag it and glass from the knob above camp or right from camp. Today is what I call easy money. Nothing to do, sit in the tent and read a book. Ceiling's dropping down on us really fast. 60 hours now, we've been pretty well sitting in this tent and not been looking at much of anything other than each other. And I got a couple good books that I'm reading. I'm fine as frog's hair. We're eating good, had some sheep meat tonight. And uh, just living the dream, baby. Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> three days of hiking your butt off and then three days of laying in the sleeping bag. Well, that, that's all three that's three days and counting now. Yeah. And counting. That's exactly right. <laughs> there is a big grizzly bear. Pretty sure it's a boar. He's real dark, long nose. Big in the hind end, but yeah, I'm about 95% sure that's a boar. That's a big bear. Our well of caribou seems to have dried up. We saw about a dozen, maybe 15 this morning. Cows, calves, a couple small bulls, and that's been it. So hopefully this weather holds out. We're able to move, and that'll really give us one day for berry to caribou hunt, which if there's caribou around, that should be enough. We'll probably get moved out to the flats where they're seeing more caribou and where they've been taking most of the caribou hunters. Barry's gonna fly out. I'll meet him eventually. Well, I wish he come. <laughs> I've been waiting four days for this, huh, Barry? <laughs> See you in a little bit, buddy. Okay, Barry, it's going to be a rough one. We're going to probably have to go all the way through because it's care. sloppy I'm going uphill. I, 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 okay. I want a good ride. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit. Ah, if you were so lucky. We're <laughs> getting a good run at her. Piece of cake. He came in, took us by surprise a little bit this morning. Had some stuff broke down. So, he's gonna fly me, or fly Barry to camp, fly me to the road, or actually fly both of us to the road. I'll meet him there, it'll drive us back to base camp, and uh, we'll get ready, head out to Caribou Camp this afternoon. Cause they got some other people to get, just a logistics deal that they're not flying us all the way to Caribou Camp. Most of the Caribou are on the other side of base camp. I got camp pretty well tore down, except for this teepee. Actually got everything stored away except for this. Just keeping everything dry, man. I've seen some nasty weather up here. The first two hunts were pretty good, but this last hunt was tough. I think most of the guys got sheep, which I'm pretty surprised. Uh, pretty tough conditions. But uh, yeah, it's been 16, 17 days that I've been sitting here, so kind of ready to get out of here, but at the same token, I'll. I'll miss it. Sheep, hunt, sheep hunting's done for another year. 
hopefully we can find and bury a nice caribou tomorrow. Tomorrow's his last day of hunting, so hopefully uh, we're gonna have to get her done quick. See my main man, Kurt Dog. Masterfully done. Oh, I saw that big grizzly again yesterday. Actually, we saw him the second day sheep hunting. Bet it up on that draw, and then we saw him yesterday on these little ridges right here. Six miles, we're gonna hit uh, wind shear, and it's black calm from here on. Oh yeah, here. You know, it's just blowing here at the mountains, but it stops right down the valley. And our temperature's picking up, we're up to 45, so. Yeah, she's been quite a deal, boy. She's been wet this past week. Wow, oh, my goodness. off the road. Yeah, that's probably not going to end well. Two calves with a cow that's limping that bad. No, oh boy, she ain't putting any weight on it. How long of a flight do we got? 35 miles. Oh, it's longer than I figured. Must be heading, heading up a ways, eh? Uh, north, actually. North and oh. west. Oh, okay. Yep. Come 641, taxiing out, be departing uh, 35, and we'll be westbound. Well, there's a bunch of lesser Canadians there on the runway? Yeah, I'm going to turn out so they don't come right on top of me. Yeah. Run a couple of those through the prop probably wouldn't be good for business. No. Oh, here's the herd already. Oh, there they are, two of them! Set <laughs> <Let> me down! <laughs> there's one back here. Oh, there's another one there. We're in the middle of a bell. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh, there's two more. The great caribou migration has begun. Has begun. There we are. Yeah, those are some hardcore caribou hunters right there, hiking five miles off the road. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can find something here nearby, Bill. That gravel bar just beyond the moose? Well, look too small? No, I just hate you put on the gravel bar in case it rains. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, you got caribou on both sides of you. And thick on the hill. That looks pretty good. I don't know if I can get a line on that thing or not, Bill, in this wind. We shall see. Just gonna float down on it here. See if I can find any kind of line. It can certainly land long ways on it, but I just don't think we could get on there in this wind. Yeah, big crosswind. Yeah, it's a huge crosswind. So I can't get slowed down enough probably to get on it. I've, we've never put anybody back in here, Bill. I don't even know if there is any possibility, but let's see what we can see. Yeah, this would be nice, a little more manageable creek. Yep. Let's see how that crosswind is. Let's we'll look at that one. And it may be too rough, so we'll make a pass at her here. But the wind's good for it. What's the verdict, Chief? That looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna roll it once, because I can't really see down. It's a little bit of flat light. I'll make one more go at it. I'm looking for other ones in case there's better ones. What do you think of the location? Oh, I think it looks pretty randy. Okay, let's see if we can make her happen.
Well, we can certainly get on it. It may be too rough to get off. I'm going to look at that other line and see if the wind quit. Could we get off that other line? If the wind comes out of that direction, could I make a strip right over here? That certainly looks possible. So I'm going to plop you in there, Bill. All righty. That's okay. amazing how you can spot that stuff. Well, it's from years of trying not to wreck airplanes. <laughs> and, I'll bet. And, and try to do this stuff. And you never know until you do it for sure. You until, know? until you wreck an airplane? <laughs> until you wreck an airplane. Well, not too bad for not having a line the first time. He ain't a peach, is it? It ain't a peach. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Well, we didn't wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Master Pioneer in her strip. <laughs> it's funny, this is called the strip. He's done her a time or two. This is Caribou Camp. Water's not quite as clean as it was in Sheep Camp. Brett had to head for home, so for the last couple of days here, it's just Kurt with the one airplane. It's coming in with Barry right now. Put a couple game bags out to mark the uh, touchdown just to make it a little easier on Kurt. It's a pretty rough strip. Uh, fairly short and it's new, so just to help him locate it when it comes in. That's a, <laughs> that's a rough strip. <laughs> That's a bushwhacking strip right there. You didn't know you were a bucking bronco rider, did you? Hey, buddy, I like it. <laughs> I don't know. Martin, hey. we made it to Caribou Camp. Took four days, but here we are. <laughs> We're not seeing a lot of caribou, but got four small bulls. It's about 7:30 in the morning. Been up since six. We've seen, oh, I don't know, probably 20 cows and calves. Just pretty thin. Just the way she goes. We're just probably maybe on the edge of the herd and. Saw some bulls yesterday. We got onto one decent bull that, uh, yeah, he was kind of in the lower end of what we were looking for for sure. And they were kind of heading away from us, so we got in on them. Uh, about 400 yards, it was just wide open. There was no good place to approach, so we had to approach and being seen and took our chances. And yeah, we just weren't able to get quite close enough for a shot. That's the way she rolls sometimes. We're getting our butts handed to us by a bunch of mediocre caribou <laughs> there's just no way to approach them and then after that we never saw anything to consider shooting so but all in all great hunt great fall uh but now i'll be i'll be have a couple of days here a little r and r and uh, move into different camps I'll be heading to western alaska for some moose and possibly a little bit of grizzly bear hunting It's uh, about a quarter to noon here on the last day of our hunt. Uh, we, were, we actually finished our sheep hunt back on August 29th. 
and uh, spent about three or four days up in the Brooks Range, uh, kind of holed up with the snow and the rain, the weather. Uh, I have two replacement knees, they're artificial. So uh, the doctors did, even told me that uh, this was something I probably couldn't do. Probably it was uh, a goal that was what they call it, it was too lofty for me. And uh, I said, nah, <laughs> I really need to be able to do this. I need to be able to, to prove to myself that uh, you know I can get back in the kind of shape I need to. And it was unbelievably rugged. Uh, I will say that uh, you know, I've said it before last year, whenever I got uh, the bear we got, uh, you just have to really work out to be in the kind of shape you need to be. Uh, but right now I'd like to just thank a few people. There's a few people I really do need to thank for being able to do this. And uh, one of them is my doctor, Dr. Miller. Uh, you know, he uh, performed the surgeries to put my knees back together. And uh, without him, I, I know I couldn't have done it. Uh, and, uh, but most of all, again, as usual, uh, I have to thank my wife, Karen. Uh, uh, I love to come on these hunts, but as soon as I leave, I start to miss her, and uh, uh, I really can't wait till I get back home and uh, be able to reunite with my family. And uh, coming up to hunt here is not about the game, or not about getting just a trophy. It's about it's about the experience you you live through here. So we had a rough hunt, but uh, I'm ready to go home, and uh, uh, I'm tired, and uh, I'm ready to go on the plane and head back. And uh, pretty much it. Ready to get your feet wet? I'll hold my license up here. Yeehaw! Wah! That was cold. Lane's on its way, but we saw a bull and a bunch of cows. We're just making a mad dash. I'm gonna try to get her done real quick like. Yeah, they're pretty flighty. Just kind of trying to cut the corner on them. So, I don't know if it's gonna work or not. It doesn't really look like it. Okay, just wait for him to stop. So just wait. Wait. If he stops right there and you get a good shot, just hold. Just wait, there's one behind him. Yeah. Let's just let him walk. Okay. No, no sense in risking nope. it. Nope. Oh, risky. We had him at 280. It was kind of working away from us. Actually, he was working sideways, and yeah, they just we just tried a real hurried stock. Actually, I don't think we could have really done the stock any differently. We gave her a whirl. Oh yeah, it was a good try. Uh, it was just the chase. Yeah. We just didn't have any cover, and we had to be quick about it. We had to go right out in the wide open. So but we better get back. Barry's got a plane to catch. Here comes our man. Left Kurt a little note and said, Kurt, give us 10 minutes. We're stalking caribou to the west. See you soon. All right, I'll see you in a while, We'll be back a couple hours. He's got to pick another hunter up, bring him out. He's going to try one last day in the field, I guess. And uh, then on the way back, he'll take me in. I think I'm going to change my socks. If you put my long underwear on, try to dry my pants out a little bit. Got a little wet crossing the creek with no gators or hippers. Three o'clock. Comes my plane ride home. Well, this is it, buddy. This is it? This is the end of 2012. <laughs> I had to make a gear load, Bill. <laughs> for one day. Yeah, for one day. Yeah, 
I don't think we'll be using this one again. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. There'd have to be the mother load of caribou here to be. There would have to be a mother load of caribou. Be using this rough bugger. Nah, oh, baby, that's pretty pathetic when we're... Oh, yeah, that one actually got some main beams. Yeah, hell, yeah. that's... Oh, those are some decent bulls. Yep. September 7th. Winter is here. 30 degrees, the snow's flying. Time to get out of Dodge. Ninth of September. Time to head to the hills, do some moose and bear hunting. Here we go. Beautiful country. Haven't uh, haven't seen anything big flying around. Saw one moose. Actually, we were circling the land here, a small bull, and uh, I thought I I know I heard one grunting just a little bit ago. There's some beautiful country. We're landing on the ridges and hunting down. Ninth of September. Sitting here, getting done setting camp. I started to heat myself up some lunch. It's actually six o'clock. I haven't eaten any lunch yet. Look out there and spotted two white dots. That's right in the direction I heard some couple of grunts a couple hours ago. And uh, this is about uh, mid to, I'd say he's right about 65. 60, 63 to 66 is what I'd call him. He doesn't lay out super flat. Uh, looks like on his right side he's got three, maybe four brow tines. On his right, he's got uh, at least five. He is an impressive moose. Now this is my kind of moose hunting. Nice open country, good firm ground. A lot of big valleys to glass, fairly open. Oh, just perfect spot and stock hunting. It'll be a little work we get a moose down, but a lot of these ridges uh, super cubs can land good enough to haul some small loads of meat out. Absolutely beautiful country. Oh, that's cool. He's pawing. <laughs> Tearing up the dirt, wallowing. Oh yeah, he's all rutted up. Yeah, it looks like he's got four on his right, probably six brows on his left. Here, yeah. he's making a scrape just like a deer. Digging in the dirt. Here's the second bull I've seen. I'm right in that same spot. 
I kind of had a feeling the way that one bull was acting there was another moose around. You can just see his antler. Well, this is the second bull. He's working his way down. He definitely heard. I think this one's a little smaller. He's probably right about 60, maybe a hair over. But he heard the other bull that I spotted first who's been kind of working that way and he's actually below him. So this bull's looking right at him. I can't see that other bull right now. These two big boys are getting closer to rumbling now. They're all the way across the valley from me. I'm just, heck, I'm only 100 yards from the tent, from the tent. But yeah, they, uh, the one's been coming in, that upper one moving to the right. I think he's got cows in there. So he was coming down to meet the other one down below, but then he went back up. I'd imagine keep a look eye out on his cows. So yeah, I can I can see him through my spotting scope, grunting as they're walking. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that first bull that I spotted, the bigger bull. He uh, he didn't even have to confront that other. The second bull I actually saw a third bull. So there's about a 63 to 66, I'll call him a 65 inch bull. That was the first one. And then the other one's about a 60. And the smaller bull's maybe 35, 40. And I did see a cow in there. But yeah, that big bull, he's he's good. He's got a he's got a drop tine uh, off his left palm. He's he's nice and wide in the palms, he's not real long. Uh, he's got at least six, maybe seven brows on his left because he's got a little drop brow too. So I think that's the seventh, and then four or five on his right. So that's a pretty darn good bull. Uh, that'd probably be a day one shooter right there for sure. This is the second bull. 58, 60 is probably about what he is. Just a nice respectable moose. But he's getting out of dodge. And here's the fifth bull of the evening, mid 50s. It's about 10 minutes till 10. Heck of a day. <laughs> really cool day. I'm 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 loving this country. Really like it. Obviously, seeing a lot of moose helps. It's already freezing. 30 degrees. You got a good frost going. Tomorrow morning could be pretty good. Eight o'clock on my first morning here. Good hard frost last night. Set up my chair, started glassing. Took me about five seconds to spot that big bull. He's not real far. He went maybe 300 yards from where he was last night. There's old big boy. I'd imagine that cow's not too far away. The sun's kind of right in the lens there. There's a nice grizzly. Looked through at him through the scope a little bit. It looked like a boar. Looked like a pretty darn good bear. Yeah, this is a pretty good grizz. I'm pretty sure he's a boar. Not a monster, but a good one. Eight foot's what I'd call him. like he's searching for berries. So like my hunter made it. Got a pretty good crosswind. Pretty rough strip. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Thank you, Billy. Yeah. 
That's a bumpy sucker right there, boy. As you can see, this country's not easy on airplanes. No, definitely not easy on airplanes. <laughs> not easy on anything. <laughs> Get the wind right, boy. They can do some time, can he? Well, you ready for this, Jeff? Yes, Billy. I am definitely ready for this. All righty. Well, we'll get I you settled in forward. here, and we'll stare at this bull all night. Yeah, <laughs> we will. <laughs> I'll dream about him. Yeah. <laughs> Quarter after eight. Jeff and I are just watching these glass and moose, watching this cow and bull. They seem to have winded. Grizzly bear working in, kind of working towards him right there. The cow is on high alert. So hopefully he doesn't run him off. Probably try to get that bull if he hangs around. Jeff was in Alaska. It was last fall, right? Last fall. So you've already seen more bulls today and you haven't even started hunting yet than you had <laughs> last fall, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess they only count if uh, you get a big one on the ground, but... Exactly right, and you need to see that one big one. Yeah. <laughs> and we've seen him, he's waiting for us over there. <laughs> we'll see if we can't string something together tomorrow if he sits tight. Yeah. It's a starry morning out there, Jeff. Oh, it well, is it looks like we're gonna get it, we're gonna be able to see anyways. <laughs> that's good, that's very good. Yeah. It's a quarter to six. Started boiling some coffee. This little this little stove boy just wake up in the morning and crank this bugger up about three minutes. This tent's nice and warm and it take long, does it? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Pretty good. Jeff's first day of hunting. He spotted a bear already. And I just been glassing for about a half hour, just spotted a cow. That's the flat where we've been seeing that big bull and the cow. And I just spotted the cow working towards those alders. Got a pretty good steady wind so far coming straight down the valley. So that's perfect. Yesterday it was straight at us, which would probably cause that wind to burble and roll at the base of that mountain and swirl a little bit. So if we keep this wind direction, we'd be in good shape. Well, there's our bull. In those willows, there's a cow in the front of them. So we've seen three cows over there, no other bulls. So he's working to the right, the cow was. I think we're gonna boogie down, probably get somewhere right over in here. Hopefully we'll be able to see him use these little strips for cover. See how it works. You ready to give her a go, Jeff? Right. <laughs> Looks pretty good. I know it's him. I could see that drop tine hanging down. Yeah, it's gonna be fairly tough to see him once we get down there. I'm sure everything always looks a lot different. But I think we got a pretty good marker on where he's at. I can actually see him right now. Step out in the clearing. He's just following cows, so. It'll be interesting. It ain't gonna be a cakewalk, that's for sure, but. We're working our way to the bottom. There he is, there was one cow there, one cow there. So I'm sure he's not gonna be right there when we get down there. But these bushes you see right here, I'll show you how tall they are. I've got my camera at eye level, so they're tall. We went down to the river, the thermals were going down and swirling. So we climb back up on this steep bank, get an eyeball on him, keep an eye on the wind. He's bedded down right now. So probably just watch him here for a minute. And go back up right on this little ridge and test the wind there. I just didn't want to get into a hurry. Yeah, it's feeling pretty good to see the tundra cotton blowing up. But he's got two He's with two cows, so we gotta worry about them as well. Tied a couple pieces of toilet paper to a willow bush down on the, down by the river. It seems to be pegged pretty well blown that way. 
Sun's coming up now, the bull's bedded, watching the tundra cotton, it's real consistent. The wind seems to be picking up, blowing up. And I think we were just getting a little squirrels by the river, but I just wanted to play it safe, so. That grizzly right behind that bush, just missed him. Looks like a good one too. A dark one, most likely a boar. These Aussies are bloody tough. I threw my boot across, but he said screw it. Jeff's a hound hunter, said he hunts in wet feet all the time, but. <laughs> That's the definition of tough right there. <laughs> They're tough enough when you get to Alaska. <laughs> Just 250 yards. I think there's some animals around here, wouldn't you say, Jeff? Yeah, I think there's plenty of guy in there, Bill. Plenty of guy. He's a good one. We're going to have to go farther up. We're going to have to go farther up and around. If we try coming straight at him from here, he's going to probably see us. Just telling Jeff, this is why bear hunting is exciting. <laughs> This is where they go when they're hit. Good and out of sight of this moose. We're going way around playing it safe. He's still bedded last time I saw him. We'll just make sure we're on the same moose because there might be more than one bull. And then just don't shoot till I say shoot. We're getting gaining on him. 300 yards. His antler tips are just over the bushes. 200 yards from him. Saw the cow milling around. A little bit ago, we saw the bull's antlers. He's still bedded. He's kind of thinking of what to do. We can't get any high ground. They're thrashing. The bull's going to come out right there. The cow's going to be right there, just to the right of the spruce. Remember to shoot low enough. Just wait, make sure the cow is clear. Wait for a clear shot. Just wait, there's a cow right behind him. Don't shoot. Okay, you can, you can take him. Reload. Okay, hit him again. Shoot him right up the rump. Okay, reload, reload. Okay, hold on, put on safety. Hold on safe. Okay. Drill them. Got yourself a fine moose. Hold it. I don't think he's going anywhere. You can go ahead and reload though. I got one there. Okay. There you go, if you can hit him right in the shoulder. Wait, wait. Yep. There you go. He's soaking it up. You're drilling him every time. <coughs> that cow's right there. He went right behind the shoulder of the heart shot. Shooting him pretty high. Aim real low. There he's down. Cow's sitting there watching. I told you, that's Aussie's as shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even know where our packs are, but. <laughs> <laughs> They're close to you, want to oh, get Billy. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the shot wasn't quite as close as what I hoped, but it, this stuff is so tall. 
Every time we try to get a better angle, we ended up getting a worse angle. <laughs> He's a nice moose. Let's go take a look at him. I see his antler. He's down, Thank man. You, Thank you very much. Unbelievable. Ah, uh, well, you hunted how many days before, and uh, now you got him. Yeah, like, I just can't believe it, Mike. You made my day. <laughs> you made my day. Oh, very nice. I've heard about Dave Kesson, the Alaskan assassin, but I'm here with Billy Miles. <laughs> the Alaskan legend. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> I'll Unbelievable. Let... Yeah, the biggest thing we had going is we couldn't shoot him for the longest time because we these yeah. two cows, we didn't know where they were. Yeah. Should we go get our mitts on this bugger? <laughs> When you said shoot him up there, I couldn't see his body, you know? Yeah. I just see the antlers. I, I figured you could dump him, but yeah, you could just see the top of him. Well, one I was watching that all the time, Billy was a cow. Yeah. So I'm glad you could see the bull, because the cow, and I kept thinking it's a cow. It's a and cow. the cow was to the right of the bull? Were you looking at that no, one, or to the left? one on the left. Okay, that's, that's the one I saw moving. Yeah. Yep. And well, and, and I kind of knew we could push our luck, because I figured we'd be able to see him up here, yeah. and I knew if they went that way, yeah. we could see him. Huh. Well, it worked out, man. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it. Thanks very much, Bill. Ah, oh, congratulations. <laughs> very you. nice. How long have you wanted to hunt moose, Jeff? Oh, uh, a whole lifetime, but seriously, the last five years, like getting old, and it's time that the time coming on the moose. <laughs> yeah. They've been rutting and stomping in here. Yeah. He's been digging. This might even be where I videoed him scraping the other day. I think this is moose. It could be bear, but now I think it's moose pawn. There's a track right there. Ah, oh, his palms are <laughs> unbelievable. Nice and long. Can you pull that? Pull that down. That's his. There he's got. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what you came to Alaska for right there. There's his kicker off the back. What? Oh man, look at that. He's, yeah, I thought he had two of them. Yeah, look actually, at this, look at this one I, over here. Yeah, I actually thought two and I wasn't game enough to say. Yeah. It's a small one, but holy hell. I knew he had two, but I didn't know this one was that big. Gee. Look at the body on this old brute. Look at them bases. I think we got a happy Aussie in camp. <laughs> That's the side of loose. The side of loose. He's nice. Look at that wave and that antler. Yeah. Oh, that's a sign of good age, and his 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 bases are nice He's and massive. An too, isn't he, really? Yeah, that's a big, big bodied bull. Yep, those waves. And then when you kind of get him, he's squared off here a little bit. He's not. Nice and round, that's usually an older bull, especially on this side. If you see how he's got kind of a straight line, yeah. it's usually a good sign he's a little bit older. I mean, that's, that's, so his chest is like 38 inches deep. Yeah. Oh, he's big. He's a big bodied old bugger. Jeff had a tape. What did we come up with? We come up with 67 inches. That's a Roger. And Billy was saying that he thought he was around at 65 inches. And I said, well, if I had to guess within an inch, I'd say 65 to 66. Yeah. So, oh, he's a he's a dandy, pretty fairly close. Well, Billy, I've traveled um, probably 16,000 miles or kilometers to get up to here. Um, and this is the second time I've been on a moose hunt. And Billy spotted this moose yesterday. He said it was around 65 inches, he thought so. And uh, we put in a hell of a stalk this morning. I think we've we've probably walked a couple of miles from camp, which was reasonably easy going until the last 300 yards or so, when Billy was putting a bit of a sprint on to, to get up this hill here in amongst all these alders and that. And uh, well, we I fired a few angry shots at him, and finally, after four shots, he, he decided to lay down. And although I think they're all generally pretty good shots and that, but. Uh, to have this bull laying here like that, it's been a, it's been a dream of mine for years and years. I can't, I couldn't tell you how long it's been. Probably, it's a lifelong dream. And I've been hunting back at home there for for 40, 40 odd years and that, and well, 45 years hunting deer. And to come up here and to, 
to hunt this hunt a moose and to, just to see a beast this big, this, like he's massive. Um, we reckon he's in the range of 14 to 1600 pounds and that's a huge, huge moose. A huge moose and, and I, I owe a lot to Billy and I, he, he says not to give him a plug but I owe, I owe this moose to Billy Mole. He was the one that talked me into coming up here. Well congratulations Jeff. Thanks very much. We're, uh, yeah, we're gonna find out what we're made of packing this whole beast out. I think we're gonna have a packer come in here, but I'm thinking that's gonna be the easiest route just to pack him up that hill. Right there, baby. We're at your one o'clock. We're right at the base of the hill. Here, I got a white bag up now. Yeah, that's weird. I just can't see it all. Did I go over you? Nope, we're right off your nose. Okay, yep, dip down and you'll see us. Oh, there you go, yep, okay. Yeah, I was looking down at the river bottom there. <laughs> Perfect, okay. Man, good job, I can see them horns from here, holy crap. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, let me look at this one place one more time and then if it don't work, I'll go up to the top and check it out. Yeah, we, we really had our sights set on a 70, so I guess Jeff will have to come back. <laughs> oh, what is that one? <laughs> uh, it's 67. Oh, come on! There's our trusty pilot. <laughs> it's 8.30. We're uh, heading down off the hill. We... Uh, actually just stayed here and finished caped it hopefully we get a packer in here tomorrow one or two of them either way I think we'll be able to get her hauled up to the airstrip so we just got to fight the maze of willows and alders and head for home Come on, Jeff, you didn't earn any breaks yet. <laughs> ah, well, the moose is right over there in the center of the screen. We're gonna pack them right up there. We slept in a little this morning. Nice, cold, and frosty. You reckon you're ready to pack this beast off the mountain, Jeff? Well, we'll give it our best shot, Billy. Well, I think we'll be able to get her done. Yeah. There's the pilots and our two packers coming down. Come on down, boys. <laughs> Party's just getting started. <laughs> That's a welcome sight, huh? That is beautiful. <laughs> That's really nice. And we're going to need them today, boy. Good morning, congratulations. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're definitely glad to see you guys bouncing over the ridge. <laughs> Young Jack here, finding out what moose guiding is all about. <laughs> it's the pack's not, the weight's not the problem, it's the balancing act and twisting around and... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is a good school of hard knocks. A couple of year apprenticeship. <laughs> And you call this a vacation, huh, George? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And you paid for this, huh, Jeff? Uh huh. That's a welcome sight. Very welcome. I'm glad they were able to land as close as they did. <laughs> Did you see his wingtip, man? It was like three feet off the ground. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm back in our airstrip. 
I just got dropped off by plane, which was pretty sweet. We didn't have to hike two miles back across. Quarter to seven. So we started packing that moose at 11 o'clock this morning. We've been pretty much going nonstop till about 20 minutes ago. So 12 loads and they were all heavy enough. Having some wild grain rice, moose steaks, corn. You gotta love her. It looks pretty good to me. It's smelling good. <laughs> I know he's gonna like this. It's Same just done. just shot yesterday. We let it cool down last night. Got some onion going with it. Oh. It's nice mild flavor, isn't it? It's oh. just it's beautiful meat. It's melting your mouth. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful. Look at that. That's a that's a tenderloin. <laughs> it's one slice of tenderloin. Absolutely beautiful. It's a steak. Good morning of day three. There's another bowl, probably mid fifties, I'd call them. Watching this bear dig, cover this moose carcass up. We can hear a bull moose grunt, grunting. Pretty wild land. So I'd say he's probably about an eight foot boar. He's just sitting in that brush and digging, running the ravens off once in a while. But it's a, it's a, definitely a mature bear. Ravens are to bears what mosquitoes are to humans. You're just pestering him to no end. He's not gonna get any time to relax. Yeah, we've been seeing a, a couple of bears, watching that bear in the gut pile, and and uh, I think probably what we're gonna try to do is get another hunter who's with another guide. We're gonna try to get him either in today or tomorrow. Maybe go, hopefully that bear will still be around or find another bear. But yeah, it's really quieted down on the bear front around here. We're not seeing quite as many. Just that one that's been there now for a couple days. Hey, this is good time, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Our good weather streak ended. And a young bull headed this way. I just gave him a couple cow calls. grunted at him a little bit so he's feeling pretty frisky now. <laughs> Boy, now that this weather's cleared the bull moose are everywhere. There's another one I didn't look in real close but like 50 inch class. Just taking some photos of this bull moose. You know I've just had the, the trip started off right from the time I got dropped off on the plane here. It was just been yeah, an adventure of a lifetime. Uh, plenty of game around. Where we've seen moose and and grizzly bears and black bears, and and it's just been a, a fantastic trip. Uh, as I say, it's a trip of a lifetime. So at 8:30 the uh, first morning of the hunt, Billy suggested that we make a bit of a, a dash over to, towards this moose, and you know, like. The, the bull ran off with the cows and and we'd run through some brush and that to get up to a vantage point and he stopped a hundred yards or so up in front of us and I was fortunate enough to be able to take a shot at him which hit him pretty hard in the shoulder. For me to be able to walk up and see a lifetime, a, dr a lifetime of dreams laying there in front of you, um, the thrill that come over me myself like it's just unbelievable um, it's, it's just hard to put into words you know like I've got plans down the future to, to build a trophy room and um, this moose has been the start of that that dream for a couple of years now and uh, finally I can go home with him and build this trophy room around this moose now 
and I thank Billy from the bottom of my heart, mate. You're it. Pleasure hunting with you, Jeff. It's been my pleasure. Absolutely. You can hunt with me any day. So, and I might have to hunt with you someday. Yeah, you're quite Head over to Aussie to, land. Well, I appreciate it. To come over and hunt our samba deer and uh, uh, you probably don't think much of our samba deer, but we'll give you an, uh, one awesome hunt over there, mate. You'll, uh, you'll enjoy it. I, I, I think we're going to have to figure on that yeah. for sure. So, so thanks very much, Billy. You bet. Pleasure hunting with you, Jeff. Hope to hope definitely if you ever need to come back to Alaska again, boy, I'd be I'd be more than thrilled to, to guide you again. So Thank my you. pleasure. Thank you. We got a plane coming. Sad to see you go. But enough with the rah-rah stuff. Yeah. We'll get you home, my man. Yeah. You got a bird on the ground. have been feeding Jeff pretty good. They were bouncing for a while, weren't they? <laughs> What's your last name, Bobby? Bobby Erickson. Erickson, very good. That's easy enough. You Swedish? Uh, a little bit. Okay. About half Swede, half Bobby and I just finished supper. I just came out here and put old Grizz to bed. So well, the uh, plan is we'll just get a good night's sleep. We won't get up bright and early or anything because we want to have good light. Hopefully we'll relocate them there, figure out what the wind's doing. This has a, this uh, scenario it definitely has a recipe for some excitement. Well, Bobby, yes, sir. you reckon you're ready for this? I think I am. I can wait. A little after nine. We didn't want to get in too big of a rush here this morning. Ravens are flying around there. The bear's still sitting there. Right there. So I think the wind's blowing right to left. So we're just gonna walk down in this tundra bank, keep an eye on them as long as we can. Find somewhere to hop across. Try to make something happen. Got my pistol and my rifle on me this morning. <laughs> This is going to be some close quarters brown bear hunting. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, or grizzly hunting. I don't know if I'll be able to get any much for video on this or not, but I'm probably going to have to be ready with the backup just because this will for sure be one shot territory. Those willows all around that bear are over, over our heads. They'll gobble that bear up in a quick hurry. We're down by the river. He's still up there. About a half mile away still. So I'm thinking we're gonna walk to right there. I don't think we'll be able to see him, but we're gonna try, maybe skirt up a little bit. And if we can't get any kind of look at him, we're gonna have to go through the bushes, kind of head towards that spruce tree or two sp big spruce try to get an uphill shot but as with any hunting scenario you just play her by ear and take her as she comes I was watching the bear and then I look over in this flat and I'm like I don't remember that spot Bobby puts his binoculars on it and he says yeah that's another bear it appears the one on the kill which is the one on the right is the bigger bear thus far. The one on the left isn't real small. Well, Jeff left me his uh, hip waders because he wasn't going to bring them home anyway. Luckily, he did, so I used them to cross. Like I say, it was over my waist, and then I just threw them back to Bobby, and now he'll cross with them. Just kind of get to that bank once you get there. Just kind of go with the flow of the water. I always want to angle kind of quartering downstream. Yeah, we've been out of sight of the bear for about 
10 minutes. Just beyond that spruce tree, probably 100 yards or so, right beyond in there. So, we're gonna hike up right into here. Right in that little opening, probably drop our packs, head to those two spruce trees, and slowly work our way up in. Wind is kind of quartering, so we should be all right in the wind. You wanted a grizzly hunt, you're gonna get one. <laughs> oh, Sam. This is probably gonna be in your face, grizzly hunt. Reload, hit him high. Okay, hit him again. Oh, you tatered him there. You smoked him there. How did you hit him on that shot, man? <laughs> nice shot. That is a big bear, dude. <laughs> yeah, you hit him right high in the shoulder and that first shot is perfect. All right, we're on safety. Right. Very nice. Very, very nice. Thank you. That's a nice bear. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> we poked over up here. We couldn't see him. I'm like, boy, he should be right in there. And I'm like, well, maybe he's chasing a raven away. And sure enough, all of a sudden, he just pops right into view. <laughs> yes. That was awesome. Uh, I didn't think I'd be able to video it, but uh, yeah, Bobby's <laughs> like, oh yeah, you could video it. I got him. Well, we'll have to keep an eye out for that other bear too. I was putting him on edge. I, yeah, I couldn't believe we couldn't see him when we got up here. Yeah, he ducked down behind that. And then he was actually while he was looking right at us uh, when we first, you know, you were about ready to shoot, and then all of a sudden he ducked, and darted off, and and I think you were maybe a little nervous that he was saw us and was running away. I was like, nah, he's he'll be right back, and he just yeah. I think he just bolted after a raven, maybe that one right there. Yeah, we'll give him a little time, but yeah, we'll go check him out. <laughs> now we're just starting out. I'll we'll unsling our rifles and get ready. You just waited a couple minutes, and we're gonna we got our. Uh, number two bear in here somewhere yeah i'm sure he'd left yeah i'm hope we were hoping all of a sudden we got up close that the second bear was gone but who knows so we got our scopes on low power we're just going to take our time before we get our packs and stuff while well, we're nice and nimble so that's good grizz right there yep big old boar good good bear real good bear yeah, he'll, if he doesn't go eight foot, he'll be real, real close to it, but I think he'll probably go eight feet. Congrats, Bobby. Thanks. You wanted a nice grizzly, you got him. You got a nice hide on him, too. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah. Thanks real lot, nice Bill. hide. Well, you can see he's got her pretty well tracked up around here. There's what's left of the spine, the hide. I'd imagine the gut pile's kind of in here and he's been laying on top of it. I think where you shot him, Bobby, is probably somewhere, right? You know, about where my pack is, where you are, I think. Somewhere down here. He wasn't up quite that high, I think, but I guess we'll watch the video back, we'll know. But Bobby Erickson, worked out pretty good first day. I've been waiting for a guy to come and go after this bear and I'm glad to get you here. That's been uh, all week. This is the first one I've seen. Then I didn't see one until I got over here with Billy. Yeah, you were hunting with a buddy of yours. He had a moose tag. He shot a moose, but you guys just weren't seeing any bears. So, and you made a perfect shot on him. We thought it was a little high, but turns out it was perfect. Yeah, we were a little nervous there for a while. Uh, got up here and we couldn't find him. And we went back, give him a little time to digest what we had given him for lunch. And we come up with our packs and then went about a half an hour later and, and walked through the brush and here we go. We lucked out and found him. And you're shooting, what are you shooting? A 338 what? It's a short action. Uh, 338 Federal. It's a Kimber. It's about a seven pound gun. Pretty light gun. I'm old and can't carry too much weight. 
so I gotta watch what I'm carrying. And what's the cartridge? What, something Montana? It's a, uh, oh, the, the type of gun is, it's a, a Federal uh, Montana Kimber okay. made. Okay. And yeah. It, and what kind of bullet was it? Uh, Barnes. Bar uh, triple shot. Perfect. Uh, 185 grain. We had about a day and a half to hunt, and Bill had him spotted when I got here, so all we had to do is wait until the next day after I flew in, and, and here we go. Sure. Congratulations again. Hey, thank you very much, Bill. You betcha, and good shooting. I like I like to see some good shooting like that. So. It's fun hunting with you. Absolutely. We'll do it again. I'm going to head down there and grab my over hip boots. I've been sitting there for about six, seven days, and head for camp. Bobby will be heading home probably tomorrow. I'm guessing it doesn't look like probably tonight. It'll be pretty late. We'll give him a holler right away, but maybe the old quads are burning pretty good now. We're getting there though. Camp's just right up there somewhere. Called base camp. The weather's been, we bet, I've been calling base camp here a couple of times, and the weather's pretty marginal, but I guess they took off and the only message they had left for me was make sure my hunter's ready. So, not sure if that means I might be staying the night. I certainly might be, but I'll probably button up a few things. I took care of the bear, got it uh, ready for salt, split the ears, lips, all that good stuff. So, uh, maybe they might, I wouldn't be surprised if they might come get Bobby this trip, and then maybe the next trip they'd come grab me. But either way, I'm going to kind of get stuff ready. Get ready to roll, but the weather's uh, just maybe starting to lift, hopefully. We'll see. You just need an airplane. Bobby's flight's leaving tomorrow morning, so he's ready to roll out of here. But the weather's broke, so plane's on the way, so they say. Planes will just keep getting bigger. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and uh, relax the rest of the evening, write a little bit, eat some supper, try to get a good night's sleep, and uh, pack her up tomorrow, weather permitting. Today is the 21st of September. It's October 21st. At home, I'm leaving this morning, heading back to Alaska, going to Kodiak Island. I was gone for 70 days straight earlier this fall. Uh, probably didn't use any of the footage from my last two hunts. The weather was terrible. Ended up getting a pretty good moose and a good brown bear. Uh, but the weather was so bad I did very little filming and didn't get the kill shots on film. Um, so yeah, heading back to Kodiak for brown bear. I had uh, seven full days here at home. So I'm all filled up on pumpkin pie, apple pie. Got the lawn mowed, some of the leaves raked and uh, pulled all the ticks off my dog, all that good stuff. So I'm ready to go back. My wife sent me with a parenting book. I don't know how she does it. Uh, a one-year-old, a two-year-old, and a 13-year-old. It's gonna be hard to say goodbye to the family. I'm gonna miss them.
definitely bears here. That one's not a very big one. Here am I. Was gonna hunt a lake about three miles from here, but it was frozen solid, so we couldn't get in here. Landed in this little cove. I would be hunting the same creek uh, that we normally do. I think I'll just set my tent right up over this berm. Drops off real nice, pretty well protected spot. Lots of bear tracks on the beach, so. Get her lined out. Maybe climb this little knob, do a little glass, and saw a couple of bears, a sow and a couple cubs, and then another uh, another lone bear. They're pretty high, couldn't tell anything about it. But. Yeah, this should be a pretty good spot. Weather forecast is good, which is almost scary, but it's been real cold, clear and cold. Uh, real, real cold fall so far. A lot of these lakes are frozen, so. Yeah, just gotta roll with the punches, adapt and overcome, I guess, so. Anytime I'm hunting along a beach, I always like to walk right along the water's edge to wash my scent away as fast as possible. Eagle's nest right on that knob. Quarter to seven. It's getting pretty dark already. 7.30, she's pretty well all over with. Got my bear fence set up. Just got a real simple camp. Just one tent, bear proof container with all the grub. Gonna climb in the tent, dial her all in, get everything organized, and hopefully the weather holds and get a hunter in here tomorrow. 8.30, October 24th. My hunter should be getting in today. Season opens tomorrow. Slept good last night. The waves crashing on the beach, just probably 30 yards from my tent. Yeah, it's kind of an odd deal. When you got a one-year-old and two-year-old at home, you gotta go to work to get some rest. <laughs> so, um, yeah, get her all wound up. Just enjoying my last cup of coffee. It's not getting daylight till about 8 o'clock. It's just kind of breaking daylight. And uh, then it's getting dark. Yeah, probably about 7.30. It's getting pretty dark. I was sitting right here calling the boss. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, letting him know what the weather is doing. And I told him, well, I better let you go because I got a sow and two cubs that just walked out on the beach. Be this year's cubs. The one walked on the other side of that rock there. I don't know what she's digging for. Clams maybe? I don't think so. I think that's too high, but digging for something, found something she thinks she wants to eat. Oh, the wind's just swirling. She just put her nose in the air. That's a good thing. It's been kind of coming more and more from my backside and then I felt it right on my neck and literally a second later her nose went in the air. And you can see her pointy nose. She's actually kind of long-legged for a cell, long in the front legs. Well, that was pretty exciting. Didn't have to go very far to spot bears. She's still wandering up the hill, moving out pretty good. So I'm glad we didn't have any kind of confrontation there, obviously. But yeah, I've got a nice day. Just uh, got a hold of the outfitter, and uh, I guess they're gonna leave about one. So somewhere around two o'clock, the hunter should get in. That sow is just rummaging through this kelp.
Comes my man. The radial engine on the beaver has got a real distinct sound. Very good, very good. Last year a hunter was a couple of days late because of weather, so nice to get him in on time. I think you're ready for bear hunting, George. I think so. <laughs> so, it's opening morning. Grind some hash browns, some eggs. Been raining a little bit off and on here during the evening. Yeah. It's not terrible cold out there, though. Wet. Yeah. It makes it feel cold. Oh, yeah. 40 degrees and raining and windy is about the coldest cold there is, I think. Nine o'clock. Had a little rain last night. Snow up on the peaks. All the ponds are still frozen. We're gonna head somewhere over in this ridge line. There's a salmon stream on the other side of that ridge. That's where we're gonna watch. So we got a, another mile and a half to go. Two miles total probably. George and I are set up. We've seen two bears so far. Right up here we saw the first one, the second one I think was about an eight, eight and a half foot boar. Pretty big bear. Yeah, he's a good bear. Yeah, I don't think he'd go much over nine. He'd, he'd probably make nine. But, uh, yeah, not much beyond that I don't think. Day one, definitely want to try to find a good boar. But, uh, George kind of liked this. Four, I'd say it was about a nine, right around right around the nine foot mark. But I don't know, it's such a late or an early fall, all these ponds are frozen up and these bears, one more good cold snap and these bears could be running for their dens. Forecast is it for or forecast is for it to stay warm. But uh, yeah. It wasn't supposed to be this cold today, so I don't know, this north wind, I think the bears they're not moving too much. Uh, keep her eyes peeled. Quarter to seven. That's way too far to hike to a glass and knob. Took us an hour and a half. Well, we didn't know where we were gonna go exactly. Actually, took us about two hours this morning getting up there. Took us an hour getting home. Good stuff, man. You ready for day number two? Ready. Right on. Very good. We're getting a big breakfast here. We're going to climb that mountain in record time. Chase some bears down. Excellent. Morning of day two. A little warmer this morning, probably 40. So that's a good thing. Hopefully the bears may be a little more active. Partly cloudy, a few rain showers on and off during the evening. It would appear that the bears are about ready to start digging in for the winter. So uh, if we see a good bear in a place we can go get it, 
we're probably going to be making the mad dash. We just spotted a bear. I think it's the same eight and a half, nine foot bar we spotted yesterday. All we've seen is a sow and a cub earlier today. All of a sudden, boom, spotted him right there. He worked into the creek. So yeah, it's a pretty good boar, it looks like. Ain't no 10 footer, but we're gonna make a run on him, see if we can't uh, get a little closer, see what we got. Now there he is, right there. Looks like we might be in a race. See him there in the creek bottom? Yep. Yeah. I'll just keep racing after him. You're gonna be ready for a sheep hunt after this hunt, George. <laughs> Hopefully he sticks around there. Yeah. Waits for us, we'll keep moving on him. About 200 yards from where we last saw him. He was heading right up there, so we're gonna work this rim. You can go and load up, just in case. I'll probably turn your scope down just in case too. You gotta really like it. Reload. Wait, he's still living. He's still alive. Can you see him? Nope. Okay, go on safety. We gotta get closer. He's still alive, I'm sure. You on safety? Yep. Okay. Okay, you lead the way. Just stay on the high ground. probably gonna be barreling down. Ah. I'm gonna load my rifle up. Yeah. Well he went down, there, he, there he's coming, he's coming out in the creek. He's coming out in the creek right down there. Hit him right in the front shoulder. I'll let him get out of the creek. He went down there. Yeah. Actually, maybe pepper him in the lungs and then he'll run. Uh oh, there he went. I think it's all over with. I think it is. Guess we'll have to do some fancy rolling. Well, you must have. You must have hit him good. Yeah, he was quartering away from me a little bit, and I put it, you know, behind the shoulder so it. Yeah, I didn't think he was. Yeah, he's all but dead. You got yourself a brown bear, man. Yeah, awesome, man. <laughs> Good job, Billy. <laughs> nice shooting. That was a pretty darn quick shot. Yeah, it didn't waste any time. I'll tell you no. That. <laughs> that was quick, wasn't it? That was very quick. <laughs> I'm guessing this was the same boar we saw yesterday. That's just a guess. He's right about the same size, you know. Sure looks like it. You know, around that upper eights, low nines type boar. And uh, yeah, so yeah, we're just, everybody, all the camps, what we're seeing are bears up high. And so we kind of figured, man, we're, we're just one bad cold day's worth of weather away from everybody digging in for the winter. So, uh, well, should we go take a look at them? Yeah, I don't see any movement down there. Very good, very good. Boy, he's got a pretty coat on him, that's for sure. There he is, yeah, it's, uh, it's a boar, yeah, he's gonna be right in that high eights. Probably, those long legs, he'll probably be real close. I think he'll probably hit that nine foot mark. George Meyer, day two. You got a high eights, maybe a nine foot boar. On a pretty tough fall, it's, winter's pretty well set in here. Actually, you can see the, uh, the ice on the river. You made a heck of a shot, man. Yeah, dropped him. One quick shot. 
Too bad he had enough energy to make it to the creek. He, yeah, he went down up here in these alders and worked his way on down and died in the creek. But beautiful bear. Got nice long hide, very uh, light colored up on top. Uh, Tolklot color, they call it, or two clot. I don't even know how you pronounce it, but. Uh, what, two clat? Two clat. Two clat, two clat, yeah. Yep. The light, uh, real dark on the legs and light colored up above. He'll make a beautiful mount. Yeah, he will. Well, how good are you at rolling bears, man? Not worth a damn. <laughs> I was hoping we got about a foot and a half cut bank here. He's going to be pretty tough to maneuver, so we might have to skin him in the drink. But hey, congratulations there, George. Yeah, thanks, Billy. It was a fine bear in fairly tough conditions. Well, we had such a nice day today. Any bear in the country should have been moving around today, we figured. You know, the sun was out, a little bit breezy, but it was pretty warm today. It was quite a bit warmer today than it was yesterday, wasn't it, George? Yeah. Yeah, we're happy to get a, a good solid boar. And... Uh, Damn right we're happy. <laughs> Excellent. Good with the loose gravel. There's the hide. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking he'll make the nine foot mark. Got him tagged up. There's the carcass. Magpies and eagles and ravens and stuff were circling already, so we're just gonna leave this here. I got the skull left in, it's closing in on five. It's dark, dark, dark by 7:30. We're gonna hoof it back. We got a solid two hour, well no, about an hour and a half going back, I guess. But uh, we'll run back, get our stuff, and then we'll just have light packs tomorrow. And uh, I'll just finish taking the skull out, get the fat out of the pads, and then we'll be, that way we'll be nice and light. So we are headed back to camp, where rumor has it, there's a box of beer waiting for us there. I think there is. And rumor has it, we're gonna drink it. We're gonna empty that. <laughs> We got a, not until we got a hour's worth of hiking to get over in the back side of that hill. Kind of a pathetic beaver dam there, ain't it? Yeah, I'll see. It ain't much, but I guess they're happy with it. And I gotta think they might have a long winter. Nothing but alders to eat. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna have a beer. Alrighty. We made her back just in time. Just in time. Wish we had a nice bear trail like this the whole way. Lots of ups and downs and undulation on the way. So we probably climb 2,000 vertical feet by the time it's all said and done, up and down. Probably 2,000 feet each way. Seen a few does, but no bucks yet. We've arrived at the carcass. There's a couple eagles and a bunch of ravens on it. No bears. So we'll skin the head, grab the hide, flush the pads, and get out of here. We got a fox circling us. We're just carving away in the skull. I got that off. I'm cleaning out the pads. Now we made it to the top of the ridge with the bear. About a mile. And we got three miles to go to the beach. Which is mostly downhill. Here's home. But for the most part, pretty nice day. Morning of day four, I guess.
Just peeking over the beach, there's a big boar. <laughs> yeah, you can see his tracks. Boy, he would have, he should have just caught our wind, too. But yeah, that was a good bear. He had a big old melon on him. It was definitely a boar. I definitely think he was over nine. We also had a sow and a cub. So this is where the bear, our, our camp's right over there. So this is where the boar walked up, and that's where we saw him, and then now this is where he was running away. There you can see that hind foot. That's a size 12. In his hind track. But then we got this trail here sometime this morning. A sow and a cub walked the beach. So I kind of think this boar might have been dogging that sow and cub, probably trying to kill the cub, quite likely, with nothing else to eat. He's probably just going to follow her. So that was pretty exciting. Well, I'm sitting here on the beach here on Kodiak Island here. Uh, it's the last day of uh, my hunt. Uh, the airplane's coming in about noon to pick me up, and uh, I came up here with a friend of mine from North Dakota, Steve Miller, and uh, we're going to go over to his camp and drop me off over there, and I'm going to spend the duration of the hunt over there and hopefully bring some good luck to Steve and maybe help him see a bear, hopefully. Kodiak's a beautiful place to be. It really is. Uh, when you know, when you get clear sky and you can see this country, most of the time it seems like it's raining and clouds and you can't see a whole lot. But I got to see a lot of the island on this trip. My last trip I didn't see much of it. It was pretty rainy. And that's a big plus. George and I are all packed up. Might be a good thing for that cub. We boogered that boar off. They're still farting around up there. I'm starting to think I might have underestimated the tide. It's coming up pretty fast. What do we got? 11.30. Plane is supposed to be here between 11.30 and noon, so if he's here by noon, we might be all right. We won't have to move the stuff. That was a rookie mistake, maybe. Might look like a hero though if he gets here pretty quick. We had to move the gear. But the plane's an hour late, so. Not entirely my fault. Here's our man. Better late than never, huh? He's coming in hot, he's coming straight in. It's been a pleasure, George. Yeah, it has, Billy. We'll get you uh, out to camp with your buddy Steve, and hopefully you'll get on another bear hunt here. That'll be pretty cool, huh? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Back her up, head for home.